Some Sadducees, those who denied that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to him, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, If someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman but died childless. Then the second and the third married her. And likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, The children of this age marry and remarry. But those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die. For they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the passage about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not God of the dead, but of the living, for to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Children of the Resurrection God of the Living The Gospel cannot be understood without bearing in mind that there is eternal life, beginning with the divinity of Jesus, which is the key to the Gospel. The divinity of Jesus has as its great proof, as its main proof, precisely his resurrection. Besides, we have become, I believe, the only religion in the world that does not give hope. The other religions will have a promised heaven, perhaps very crude or purified over the centuries to spiritualize it a little more. I imagine that the Muslims are not yet talking about heaven with the hurrits who serve continuously cups of some liquor that can be drunk there in their paradise and exotic fruits. I imagine that the Buddhists or the Hindus with their nirvana, neither will they have a heavenly promise of food, drink, but they all have a promise of eternal life. We do not. It is almost impossible, except maybe at the end of the liturgical year, that the priest talks about eternal life. It is very rare to find a priest who talks about eternal life. Many times, even at funerals, have become a eulogy of the deceased. How good he was, even if he is not always so good. Instead of giving the bereaved who are there, sometimes suffering a lot, a ray, a handout of hope, we have become a religion that only talks about ethics, because we no longer even talk about faith, faith and trust in God. We only talk about ethics and duties. You have to do things that sometimes go against what the world demands, especially with regards to the sixth commandment. And what happens? Since there are no motivations and there are only burdens, what we try to do is to reduce the burdens. This is not sin. This is not sin. This is what we have come to. Faith in the power of God. Trust in the love of God. Hope that this is just a step and that there is a life after this life. All this is no longer in the catechesis. I insist, and as the obligations are many and sometimes difficult to carry out, what they try to do is to reduce the obligations so that it is not so hard for you and so that you continue to go to a church that in reality gives you less and less motivation to go to church. It is not strange that with this we are reducing ourselves from day to day, and the way is not to reduce as many propose, ask for less. No, the way is to increase the strength to give what we have to give, give more, not ask for less. St. John Paul II said that there were two ways to climb a mountain. One way was to destroy the mountain, a powerful atomic bomb that destroyed the mountain, 
and left a plane. And the other way was to strengthen the legs of the person who had to climb the mountain so that he could climb it. He who was a mountaineer knew what he was talking about. We have to strengthen our worldly knees. We have to strengthen our knees, as the Old Testament says, as a psalm says, strengthen our knees, that is, strengthen our legs to climb the mountain, because in the end, after climbing that mountain, what you find is eternal life and heaven. Of course, we have to present ethical demands. How can we not present the ethical demand to respect life, to respect the word given in the family? to respect the property of others, to respect the honor of others. How can we not present these ethical demands? But we must give strength to those who are asked not to steal, not to kill, not to lie. We must give strength, and the strength must first be faith in God's love, trust in Him, and then the hope of eternal life. There has been a lot of criticism of those who say and insist that there is going to be a judgment and that some, God knows who, are going to hell. But even those, those who are so, so insistent on hell and who may be presenting a religion of fear rather than a religion of love, even those who talk about eternal life, it is much better to be told about hell because it goes hand in hand with the preaching of heaven than not to be told about anything at all. That is, to meet death without even a glimmer, a little hope that after death there is something else. Recently, I was asked to pray for a child with leukemia, an adolescent, and for his family. It is a person who asked me to pray for him, whom I appreciate very much, and I have been praying all the time. Yesterday, I was told that the thing was already ending. Well, I continue praying because miracles really do exist and I pray for his family. They have done everything possible to save the life of their son. Science, medical science has done everything it could and if the outcome comes and if it comes to the death of the child, what do these parents need? They need to have hope that their child is still alive. That is, death which is going to touch us all early, prematurely, or at the end of a long existence, this is but a step. It is what Jesus has promised us, and this is what he has assured us with his own resurrection. There is eternal life. The Lord said it. Trust in God and trust also in me. I am going to prepare a place for you in my Father's house. There are many dwelling places, and he proved it. He said it. He promised it and he proved it with his own resurrection. There is eternal life. God is God of the living and we are children of the resurrection. Do we believe in that resurrection? Do we preach that resurrection? Without that, all Christianity becomes impossible to practice and sometimes even absurd. I believe, I hope, and because I believe and hope, I love. That has been our itinerary for 2,000 years. Faith, hope, and charity. To remove faith and to remove hope is to cut the roots of a tree and to continue demanding that it bears fruit. We are children of the resurrection. Fortunately, that resurrection is not a dream. It is a reality certified by the resurrection of Christ. Amen.